feline friends and welcome back to our channel. Today I'm going to talk about how we've been training Spike so far. He's still got a lot to learn, so emphasis on me so far. And also share some tips on how you can start training your cat. But training is a very broad term. When I say training, I mean tricks and also just general behaviors that you want your cat to acquire as they grow older. So there's obviously a lot to cover in this domain. So for today's video, I'm only going to focus on teaching your cats tricks. And for us, we've um, recently been focusing on trying to get Spike to not jump on the dinner table and also getting him to sleep throughout the entire night, which we've almost accomplished at this point. Without further ado, let's get into the video. So first I'm gonna focus on teaching your cat tricks. There's two main things that are really important here. One is to start as early as possible. So we got Spike when he was around four months old and after a few weeks of letting him get acquainted, I wanted to start teaching him some tricks. Here's where tip number two becomes intertwined with starting early and that is to find a treat that your cat really likes. And for those of you who are kitten owners, it's really important to find a treat that's safe for kittens. I highly recommend um, I always get the name of this wrong. It's called Inaba True Squeezable Treats. But basically this treat is very digestible, very safe for kittens. I did try to feed Spike um, some kind of freeze-dried salmon treats when he was a kitten because I read that those are also safe. But what ended up happening was his teeth weren't developed enough, so he ended up choking on those treats and just basically throwing it all up. So um, the Inaba True treats have been working really, really well for us ever since he was a tiny kitten. Um, and I will link them down below if you are interested in purchasing them. So when I first started training Spike, I did stick with using these squeezable treats. Now he's about eight months old and I still have been teaching him some new tricks, but he's been able to digest some bigger or harder treats. So we've expanded our variety of treats that we give him. Okay, so now you've got your kitten, you've got your treats, what's next? Well, I would recommend starting off with something very, very easy. The first thing we taught Spike how to do was to just sit. Oh, so another thing I want to mention is I know some people use clickers. We did start off training Spike with this and now he's very used to them. Actually, even when he hears the little key jingle, he, he comes and runs over and he's basically ready for a treat now. But this is another recommendation I have. It's not a necessity, but it is very helpful because if you don't have treats handy, but you want to reinforce good behavior, basically if your cat does something good, then you click the button and that signals to them that they did a good job. <laughs> so right now Spike even heard that click and he's very happy because that signals to him that he's doing something good. Okay, so now back to how we trained Spike to sit. So basically I had my clicker handy and then I had the squeezable Chibara, I'm sorry, Inaba Churu treat. I always want to say um, Chibara Inu because I think of Shiba Inu, but anyway. Uh, we started off just kind of showing him how to sit. So basically it was just repetitions of me pushing his butt down and then giving him a little bite of the squeezable treat and doing that iteratively, repetitively, until he finally got the sense of sitting on his own and getting to the realization that sitting would lead to the treat. And every time I fed him the treat, I would also use the clicker to signal good job so that he associates this sound with getting the squeezable treat. I keep using the clicker as a demonstration. I think he's really waiting for a treat. So I'm gonna pause for a second and just give him a treat so that he doesn't freak out at me. Okay, so Spike actually learned sit fairly quickly, I'd say in about two days of training. And then after he learned how to sit, we were then able to uh, exercise that skill uh, throughout the day. I'm sorry, he's playing with the clicker right now. But um, and what I mean by that is basically even when we're kind of giving him his food for breakfast or for dinner, uh, I'll usually tell him to sit before I put the food bowl down just to reinforce that behavior. Sit, bud. Oh, good boy. And I also noticed now that he's older, he does sit when he wants something from us because he knows that leads to a positive reaction from us. So for example, when we're playing fetch and he's waiting for me to throw the mouse again, he used to actually bite my feet a lot, but now he just sits by the mouse because he knows that that will lead to getting what he wants. 
Okay, so the next trick we taught Spike was how to give his paw. And again, the same concept, we just um, at first started off grabbing his paw, giving him a treat and doing that over and over again so he could get used to the motion. And this one actually took a little bit longer for him to learn. I'd say it took about a week of training. And then finally at the end of the week, he kind of connected the concept of giving us his paw and then receiving a treat. And then the final trick that we've taught Spike, which we taught him very recently, is how to stand on his hind legs. So this one's a little bit trickier because Spike, I'm not sure if your cat is like this, but Spike doesn't like being held up in that stance. So it was kind of difficult to try and get him up on his hind legs um, and trying to show him that movement. I just held the snack up at a height where he couldn't reach it sitting. And then um, I just held my finger up so that he could differentiate this trick with giving us his paw. <laughs> Actually recently I did stop using the clicker. It seems like he still does associate good behavior with it though. Reinforcing the point that you should always start things as early as possible because when your cat is a baby kitten, they will kind of solidify some behaviors and associations in their brain more easily than if they were an adult. So now moving on to behavioral aspects of training. So the two things we're working on, like I mentioned earlier, is trying to get Spike to not jump on the dinner table when we're using it, and also to get him to sleep throughout the entire night. But not much has really worked that well for us in terms of getting him off the dinner table, but basically over time he's kind of learned to stay away from us when both of us are using the dinner table, probably because eventually he doesn't get what he wants, he gets frustrated and goes away. So really the main thing we had to keep doing in the beginning when he jumped on was just take him off the table. No. And eventually, you know, he would try to get to our food and we just kept kind of um, grabbing him, taking him off the table and that kind of eventually taught him to stay away while we were there. I have read other tips online like rubbing citrus on countertops or putting aluminum foil because cats are afraid of the sound, but neither of those things worked for us. So it was just a matter of us pushing him off the table. <laughs> Finally, the last thing I wanted to talk about today was getting Spike to sleep throughout the night. So this was another behavior that was more gradually acquired over time. So when we first got Spike at four months old, we initially didn't let him into our bedroom, mostly because he was so tiny and we were just really afraid of rolling over him in our sleep. So we wanted to wait until he was big enough so that we wouldn't crush him or endanger him in any way if he decided to sleep with us on the bed. I think this helped uh, reinforce his behavior of sleeping through the night because when we used to come inside for the night, then he would get kind of bored and just go to sleep on his own. But Another thing you can do to try to get your cat to sleep throughout the night is to really just try to wear them out throughout the day. We do play with Spike frequently throughout the day. I mean, luckily, because we're both working from home during the pandemic, we do have a lot of time to play with him. But even when we return to work, we do plan to play with him when we come back, especially right before bed, so that he can really expend his energy and fall asleep through the night. We've basically got him to the point where he does sleep with us throughout the night, but he wakes up really early, around four or five. I did hear that cats are most active actually at dusk and dawn, so um, that does hold true to Spike's sleeping schedule. But we don't mind too much. Usually um, I'll get up around that time to go to the bathroom anyway. And then usually he'll just have some zoomies by himself for maybe 30 minutes. But if neither of us are engaging with him, he'll just go right back to sleep until we wake up around seven or eight. And again, like I said, our use of the clicker did taper down a bit as he got older. That's just me kind of forgetting about it or being lazy about using the clicker, but I would highly, highly recommend using it to reinforce good behavior. I hope this video was helpful for you all. Please feel free to leave any comments or questions down below, and I look forward to seeing you all in my next video. Bye everyone.